Hey gang, welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesday by Brilliant Directories. It's great that you could join us here today. We got a great presentation for you, a lot of great topics that we're going to cover. Also, if you guys have questions, uh, hopefully we can get to them at the end of the webinar. If this is your first time joining Webinar Wednesday, welcome. I'm Jason there on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by Rick, one of the support specialists here at Brilliant Directories, and as well as David Rocklin, uh, the digital strategist here at Brilliant Directories. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Hello, Jason. Super happy to be here, man. Hey, everyone. Glad to be back. Awesome. Awesome. And I always like to mention, if you're not already a member of our Facebook uh, strategy group, you can join. You can, can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. It's a great place to continue the conversation in between webinars. There's a lot of great participation in there. I myself am in there, uh, and there's some really good discussions, and everyone's learning from each other every single day. So why don't you take a minute and join our Facebook group? You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook and click the join button there. And again, for those of you joining for the first time, welcome. Webinar Wednesday is a great place and venue to share um, ideas to grow your community faster. A lot of it revolves around uh, marketing strategy and providing a better user experience for the visitors on your website. We cover topics such as how to convert visitors into members, increasing website traffic, identifying unique revenue opportunities based on the industry you're serving. One of my favorite topics, and we seem to always circle around back to this, is how to improve your website's navigation. For example, um, how to simplify your main menu links, how to draw people to certain calls to action or buttons that you want them to click on. And that helps provide a better experience and thus um, helps increase uh, member signups and, and provide a better user experience. If you have questions on these types of topics, we'll get to them soon, so save them, write them down, and uh, we'll do a Q&A session shortly after the main tip of the week. And since about webinar 46 or 47, we decided to always keep this slide in webinar Wednesdays. It's just a reminder not to get stuck on the hamster wheel. And the hamster wheel is when you stay, you know, you're running a community, an online business, basically, and you need to be doing different things all the time. It's important not to get stuck on one part of your business. Um, I always mention that the number one step that I see people getting stuck on is designing their website. Uh, but you also have to focus on driving traffic to your website, creating marketing materials and advertising your website, reaching out to your members and talking to them and finding out what their problems are. And then uh, on your website, showcasing that you can solve those problems and, and continuing through these cycles. You know, you could spend a week or two or even a month on one of these steps, but just make sure that you're continuously cycling through these steps. It's going to ensure that you're making traction and helping and it's helping to grow your online business and community. And we have a few uh, BD Lab updates that we've, uh, a few features that we've launched since the last webinar. There's actually dozens and dozens, but I try to just narrow it down to some of the most important or useful for you. One of them is we've upgraded the design of the member upgrade page. Now, if you've had this page customized, it's not going to affect you. Uh, but for everyone else, you've got a, a, a definite upgrade to your upgrade page. And let me show you uh, what I'm referring to here. And it's also going to be uh, the tip of the week that we're going to talk about today uh, is about the upgrade page and how to uh, optimize it. So let me just log in as a member here. And we'll click on upgrade listing. And in, in this example, and these are options that are now available, one is we've, we've totally changed the layout of this. It's, it's much more intuitive and, and easier for the user to see what's going on. But there's also places where you can add supportive text uh, about why people should upgrade or about each membership level, and we'll get to that in the tip of the week. So this page got an upgrade, and it should help uh, encourage some of your members who have the upgrade option to pull the trigger and uh, go ahead with upgrading their membership plans. This is a new feature. It was actually spawned by a suggestion in the Facebook group. Uh, it was the ability to sort posts such as coupons, events, articles, based on the membership level's uh, search priority. And prior to this, you would only be able to sort your posts by one default setting, such as uh, alphabetically A to Z or by this event start date. 
now with this option, and, and it's available to everyone, uh, you can actually add an additional layer of sorting options, which is to respect the membership level's uh, search priority. And let me show you exactly how that works. So before I get into how it sorts your posts, like articles and events, uh, let's go to the dashboard here, and let's see exactly what that's referring to. If you go to Manage Products under the Finance tab, these are your different membership levels, essentially. And with each membership level, you can designate the search priority. Uh, so in this example, premium members have a search priority of one. Featured members have a search priority of two. And basic members have a search priority of three. With this logic, if a visitor does a search, for example, let's just pick a location like California, all the premium members would show first in the search results. Then the featured members and the basic members would all be at the end of those search results. So what you're doing is you're providing better visibility for your premium members, and that's essentially what they're paying for. For posts such as articles and events, it never respected the search priority. Let's look at the, the options uh, for blog posts, for examples. Let's go to Edit Post Settings, and let's click on the Blog Article Post Type. And let's go to the Search Results Design. And in the last webinar, actually, uh, Rick and Sherilyn covered a good portion of what the Search Results Design settings do. It's very informative. And one of the things that wasn't there before was this option to respect membership level search priority. But let's not talk about this one. Let's talk about the order results by. This was the option that's always been there. So you can choose how you want your blog articles or events to be sorted. And there's various options here for the default sort order. Uh, so you can sort it by the title A to Z, Z to A, uh, the date it was created uh, or posted. If it's an event and has a start date, you can do start date soonest or soonest last, and so on and so forth. But there was never any priority based on the membership level, and obviously your premium members are paying for more visibility. So now with this option, you can actually show all the premium members' posts, blog articles, ahead of the featured and basic members' posts. And then after it, it puts all the premium members' posts ahead, then it will sort by the order results by. So it'll put all the premium members' posts first and then sort it by order results by. Um, I set up a little example here to see how the functionality works. So we have two articles here. And uh, this is by a lower tiered member. I just gave it that title. And this is a premium members post. And right now we're sorting it alphabetically and respect membership level search priority is set to no. So I'll go ahead and set this to yes and save the changes. And I'll go ahead and refresh the page. Now, this is a very simple example with just two, um, uh, two posts here. But now we can see the premium members post is at the top. Um, and the lower tiered post, the basic members post, is underneath this now. So this is a great way to, one, encourage people to upgrade and also to actually deliver more visibility to your premium members' content, which is basically what they're paying you for on your website, is for that additional visibility. Now, I also wanted to tie in and talk about one of the add-ons we had released uh, a couple months ago, which was the pin featured posts, because that kind of ties into this as well. Let me scroll down here. Okay. So this one would be an add-on, and it's pin featured posts. And what it allows you to do as the, the website owner is specifically hand pick posts that you would always like to be at the top of search results. As long as that post is part of a search, a search um, and a, in the search results, it will be pinned at the top. So you can pin featured posts. So now with this option, and let's actually pin the lower tiered members post to the top. So what we can do is go to manage posts, I'll open a new tab here. And here's the blog articles, and here's my lower tiered post. I'm actually going to set as featured post. All right, and if we refresh the page, 
So now the lower tiered members article is showing at the top, but only because I've specifically pinned that top post. So now you have basically three ways to sort content. One would be to pin um, single or multiple posts at the top of the search results. Then you can choose to respect the membership level's search priority. And then lastly would be the default uh, way posts are ordered, which would be A to Z, their start date, et cetera. So um, you, this is a, a feature that's available to everyone now. And you can start letting your members know that if you want to enable this, that their posts are going to receive priority ahead of lower tiered members. Or it's a great way to inform lower tiered members that they should upgrade if they want their posts to get bubbled up in the search results on your website. Um, coming soon, uh, we have a, a we actually have a bunch of add-ons uh, going through a QA right now. A couple that I wanted to just uh, show you an example of. We do have one report this page. Uh, not everyone needs this on their site, um, mainly if you're not spending a lot of time time moderating your site or if you have a, a closed network. Uh, but if you have lots and lots of users and you need help moderating. Uh, you can now have a report this page button on your site. It's very simple and straightforward. I'll show you how it's going to work. Uh, let's actually just click on an article here. So what it's going to be, it's going to be a widget that you can place in your sidebar or anywhere else you want to place it around your site on one of the pages. The basic button will look like this. You can obviously control the text and the icon. Um, and when somebody clicks on the report this page button, uh, they'll get a form, um, and you can also modify this form, but it'll ask them for their name and uh, their email and their phone number. Now, if you didn't want to gather all this information, you could remove some of these default fields. And I'll say, uh, this page has incorrect info. And we'll do this, and we'll submit the report. Now, what's really nice and handy about this, so it says your message has been sent, and I can go back to the page. Uh, what's really nice is if you go to your dashboard as the website owner, you actually get notified in your form inquiries. Uh, so now I have a new inquiry, and it's from the report post form. Uh, so this is the I know that someone's reporting an issue, and all the information's here. You can view the inquiry in more detail. So it says this page has incorrect info. And uh, I know that the, the origin page is here, so I, as the website owner, I can go ahead and visit that page. And uh, well, I'm already on that page, and I can see if it does have incorrect info or inappropriate information or content, and I can take appropriate steps to rectify that. So that's an add-on that is uh, coming down the line soon. And uh, Jason, real quick, yeah, that add-on is really great. Not necessarily if you have a website focused on, you know, maybe some sketchy industry, but also if you just have a really large directory, thousands of members constantly adding content. If you're the sole website administrator, it can become pretty difficult to kind of juggle all the balls that you're handling and keep an eye on all of the content and all the listing profile pages. And so this really lets you utilize your community and, and kind of help you keep an eye out for anything that doesn't look right. Absolutely. It's, it's definitely a helping hand when visitors of your site can help you moderate content, especially if you have thousands of members or hundreds of members and they're all posting uh, random pieces of content contributing to uh, your site. And the most important thing, too, though, is that when a page is reported, it doesn't get taken down automatically or anything like that. The website admin, the owner, still has total control to decide what to do with that page if anything does need to be changed. That's true. And when somebody fills out that form, the website admin will get an email notification that a page has been flagged and reported. So uh, you'll get that in, uh, notification in your inbox. And again, you can take the appropriate steps as needed. Uh, this one we're not going to show an example of just yet, but it is the highly anticipated private member chat. It's going through its final stages of QA. Um, we're looking to have it released. We were probably looking, uh, we were hoping to have it end uh, this week, but it's looking closer to the end of next week. We'll post an announcement in the Facebook group, but just wanted to give you guys a timeline update on that one. Um, and we're also going to be adding a feature. I did mention the pin featured posts. Um, we are going to be adding an option where you can set an expiration date. So let me go here. Um, let me go to manage posts. 
And over here where it's where you can check to set as featured, there will be a, a date picker and you can choose a date in the future. And once that date hits, uh, the system will automatically stop featuring that post. So if you wanted to sell 30 days of, of featuring a member's post, um, you can certainly do so and, and come in here and set an expiration date for that, which will add a little bit of a convenience for you uh, to manage some of these pinned posts. All right, so those are the BD Lab updates for this week. Lots of good stuff coming down the pipeline, and we'll be sure to keep you posted in the webinars as well as in the Facebook group. All right, we have an awesome segment for you today in Rick's Corner. Obviously, here we share simple solutions for common questions. And Rick, you created a nice little presentation for us. A lot of people in the support center have been asking how to clone or modify the contact us form, and I think you have some simple steps to kind of guide us through that process. Yes, that is completely correct, Jason. So today we we took some time to create a, a new contact us form and I'll go ahead and take the necessary steps so that everyone can go ahead and complete this on, on your end. Um, there is an added functionality to this form and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people clone this specific form. Um, the uh, We're going to go over all the details in just a bit, but yeah, that's um, that's basically it. It's a, it's a cool, very easy to to handle process that is gonna add a lot of value to your project. And what are like one or two main reasons why someone would want to clone or modify the, the contact us form from their website? Well, there, there are several reasons, right? The uh, Depending on the type of information that you might wanna request from the user of the website, that will be one, one reason why you might wanna edit this. Um, you might wanna request more information, you will, might wanna request less information. Um, you could also request more information that's geared towards the industry that you're currently um, providing the service to. Um, like you, the, the contact us form, like everyone knows that comes by default with all brilliant directories websites has very, uh, very limited information here in the, on the form. So since you are offering this to the public, you might as well take advantage of this functionality and you could add additional information, take advantage of the full, uh, full, um, form options that are available in the forms manager, which is uh, super fun. <laughs> and again, we're gonna get to that in just a second. So yes, yeah, as we were talking about before, the contact us form comes by default with all Brilliant Directories websites. This is basically how it looks. Um, the, uh, like we mentioned before, very limited information, basically just the name, the email, the phone number, and a brief message from the user of, of, the, uh, of the website. So what I did here was, let me go ahead and jump to the one that I created. Um, this of course is just an example, um, but I simply added three more fields um, using the different form fields options that we have available in the forms manager. Um, as you can see, this, this first field that I added allows the user of the website to select more than one option. Here underneath we have the dropdown. It looks very, very nice, very uh, organized. And then underneath that, the third field that I added was the, or is the one that actually allows the user to only select one. So you can go ahead and only choose one of these. So back to the reasons why um, you might want to clone the contact us form, um, the added functionality of, of sending out an email from this form is something that a lot of customers and a lot of, of you guys um, are very interested in. And as we always say in brand directories, when you want to create a new form, it's always better to clone a form than to start from scratch. So let me go ahead and show you guys how easy it is to clone a form. Um, let me go ahead and jump here. Uh, another tab. The one that I have here is just the, uh, the contact us form. Go ahead. We don't really need that one here. Um, this is the one that I created, which is the, the new contact us form that I modified and cloned. Um, and this is how the actual form looks like. Let me start from, from the beginning. So let me go ahead and jump over to the form manager so that you guys are you're, you guys are probably very familiar with this section of the backend. Um, here on the top, what we have are the customized forms. So in this case, well, this is the one that I created. So this is the first one that's gonna show up here. And we have underneath that the default forms. Those, the, those are the ones that again, by default, come on with all Brilliant Directories websites. Now, when you clone the form, let me go ahead and click here, edit. So we go into the form 
quote unquote into the form. Um, and what you have here is the ability, the uh, you have the uh, the option, the opportunity um, to just go ahead and clone the form, right? Super easy and super straightforward. Um, but underneath that, what you have is also the ability to control the settings of the form. And this is when it really comes into play, like the whole receiving an email or sending out an email when the form is submitted, that's where you are going to go about editing this. Before jumping into those settings, I wanna briefly go over the form field real quick here. These are the, the ones that I created. So as you can see here, this is a checkbox select, as we saw before on the, on the live form. It basically allows you to select multiple options from a list that you're gonna add here. Um, very important, if you guys uh, forget to add the database variable name, then the whole form field is not gonna work. So keep that in mind. You wanna, you wanna make sure that you add a, a variable name on that field and um, that it's also unique. It's very important, very important to mention. Um, right next to it, what you have, of course, is the field label name. So this is what the user of the form or the website is gonna be able to see. So yeah, this is the uh, the checkbox select. Here we have a quite a few options for you to choose from. So I went in in in, in this example. I just selected the the checkbox select. Uh, underneath that one, we have of course the drop down. Again, very very uh, organized way to add a few options for your user to choose from. And underneath that one, the third one is the uh, radio select, which is yeah basically just the the way in which your user is going to be able to choose one of the options that you're gonna lay out for them. So yeah, again, the same fields, very important. Keep an eye out on the database variable name that sometimes um, sometimes we will receive that field and then the whole form field doesn't work properly. So uh, Rick, uh, regarding yeah, the ahead. database variable name, um, are, do you have any tips for those? Like, are you allowed to use uh, spaces in between there or like weird characters or should you just limit it to uh, uh, alpha, the alphabet letters and numbers? Yeah, that's a great question, Jason. And we strongly recommend, uh, or actually, it's comp it's recommended 100% to to stay to stick with the uh, with the letters and the numbers, alphanumeric all the way. No, um, no, no spaces. The spaces does break the uh, the functionality, so avoid the spaces. If you need to add a space, I use a uh, Un underscore underscore correct the underscore symbol so that would allow you to separate if if you want to go ahead and use two words you can use one like just type it all together that's also going to work so yeah that's a that's a great question all right so when when you have the form customized the system is going to allow you to save it right in which in other terms it's basically cloning the form in this case well you're going to add so more information, so it'll be like customizing the form. Uh, but then it, what we're gonna be able to do again is just go and check out those uh, form settings. Let me go ahead and open those up here. So very, very straightforward um, information on the general settings, just the name of the, of the form that you're going to be uh, editing here. You can go ahead and use any type of name that you would like, but keep in mind that you also have to have a unique form variable name which uh, basically the same the same principles that we talked about before with regards to the database um, values those same those same um, parameters apply to this field so keep that in mind um, more importantly though what we're going to be focusing on is going to be the email settings so let's go ahead and jump over to that tab here and these email settings are what control what goes out when the form is submitted. Right, so if the user of the website again fills out that form, it takes the time to share the valuable information that they want to share with you as a directory owner. Um, then here is where you're going to control what happens next. So if you want to send an email after that form is submitted, then please go ahead and just switch that to yes. <laughs> That's basically it. That's all. All you have to do. Super straightforward. Um, what we have underneath are more detailed settings and we're gonna go over those real quick here. We have the option to choose a specific email template to be submitted when the form is completed. So that's, uh, that's important to, to mention. If you, wanna, if you wanna edit the default template that's used, we always recommend creating the template first and then selecting that new template from this dropdown, right? That's basically the way that it's going to work. 
Um, but yeah, by default, it, it's going to use the uh, contact us. Then underneath that, what we have is the option to send out the email to the admin, basically just using the, uh, the admin's website email, or you can go ahead and specify another email right underneath that. It says email address or admin email address, sorry. And you can go ahead and add a valid email address, which the system in turn is gonna use when the form is submitted. And last but not least, we have the, uh, the option to choose the, the template that's used to um, submit the information to the admin of the website. So yeah, it's very straightforward. Now, this is really helpful because based on the type of form you're creating, you can send a message to the person after they uh, they fill out that form, a specific message. But, Rick, I do want to note, though, the reason why cloning, for example, the contact us form is, is important for situations like this is the, these email settings don't work yet um, with any or all the forms uh, in your BD database. Um, so if you're looking to send a message after someone fills out a form, I would recommend sticking with um, cloning the contact us form. Uh, but soon uh, we do have it in the queue that the, these email settings will work for any and all forms uh, submitted from your BD website. So that's something to look forward to as well. 100%. And thank you for mentioning that, Jason. The, uh, the, the, the form that has those all of those parameters all of that functionality by default is the contact us form. So if you're looking for that functionality, meaning I want to receive or submit an email when the form is submitted, then that's the, the form that you need to clone, the, the, the contact us form um, that has everything that you need. It's just a matter of clicking that friendly button, the clone button, and you're going to be set to go. Nice. So so you created this form, and then I saw that you you had put it on a on a, on a front page of the website. Can you show us how you actually put this form on the front page of a website? Yes, sir, I'll be happy to. Now, to do that, let's go ahead and jump over here to the general settings, because we have uh, the, the field that we mentioned before, the form variable name, this comes into play through this process, throughout this process. So let's go ahead and copy the name of the form, all right? This is not the only place where you can get the name of the form, by, by the way. I'll go ahead and close this and I'll show you the same name you can Go ahead and copy the same name right from this section here. It's again, it's just the uh, name that the system internally uses to identify this specific new form that you created. So the process to add a form to a static page, luckily it's super easy, Jason. Um, let me go ahead and show you what I did on, on the one that I already created. So I went and to the content, edit web pages, I created a new web page. I just called it new form contact, keep it simple. Um, and right underneath what I did was that I used the uh, short code form equals and the name of the form. So I just went ahead and inside brackets, typed in form equals form new form info. That's going to print the raw form, right? No styling or anything around that. Correct. Exactly. Just basically, uh, just basically grabs the information from the form and it pastes that on the, on the page where you add that. Um, you can always take, this one step further, you can go ahead and create a widget, call the form on the widget, and then call that widget on the static page. It's just another um, another extra step. Um, it does require a little bit more work. It takes a little bit more time. Um, but if you do want to go that route, definitely encourage. Um, the uh, the other thing is that if you are creating this new 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 page, you might as well create a very nice landing page, right? You're taking the time to go ahead and create this new form and um, open this channel to the user of the website. Creating a very nice stylized um, landing page is not complicated at all. Um, this has been discussed several times already throughout the webinars. So yeah, you might as well just take that extra step, create that nice landing page and add this new form onto that landing page. Very nice. Um, cool. So yeah, when you save that form, then like Jason said, it just basically comes raw no style whatsoever, it's just basically the form, but it does have all the functionality that we've just talked about. The ability to submit the form, the ability to respect what the, the um, form fields um, do, right? Meaning allowing you to choose only one or several or open up the dropdown. Um, but yeah, this is basically how that comes up. Fantastic, Rick. Let's see if anyone doesn't, I'm gonna lower everyone's hands. If you have a question about this, we'd love to hear it. All right, we got Eric's got his hand up. Eric, how you doing today? Hey, what's up? I had a I had a couple questions. Um, number one was 
I was trying to figure out what's better to use in certain cases like this, the contact form or the lead form, just because of where it ends up in the back end. And then my second question was, do you have any idea on the release date of all the forms working to send emails? I don't have uh, – so to the latter question, I don't have an exact release date. It is in the queue. And in addition to that, Eric, another update that we have uh, coming down the line is you will be able to do two things. You'll be able to also search for members who have or who have not filled out a specific form, and then you'll be able to create contact lists uh, from those people. So you could identify all the people, for example, who have – filled out the create a coupon form and you know those people have created a coupon on your site and you can do whatever you want with that type of list um, so those are I think those are going to come hand in hand those two but they are on the list and so uh, off. it's not a ways off I would, I would say a couple months I don't know the exact time frame but it is in the queue okay and so what about what do you think about using you know the lead form versus the the contact form because it, it, I don't know if like one one is more powerful in the admin area than the other. That's what, I guess what I'm I think, asking. I think the contact us form is nice because it does the simplest thing. It you have an option to send the submitter an email. Uh, you have the option to send the admin an email, as well as Eric on the left hand side. You see that number one there on Rick's screen. Um, it yeah. shows you any new inquiries that come in, and I really like that. So. Um, I think that's a great and simple and elegant way to create contact forms or application forms, whatever you use the form for. Um, and I think the contact us form is a great place to start. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks. All right. Looking thanks, Eric. To the, to the uh, form release. I, I'm too. I'm really excited about those. So thanks for all the, the questions there. All right, guys. I think there's no more questions about that. So thank you very much for that, uh, that overview, Rick, of that. Actually, Jason, Peter's asking if it's possible to preview forms while editing them. The only way to do that would be maybe if it's a form that's currently in use would be to clone it and then place that form on like a private test page, right? Yeah, I think Rick's example actually uh, covered it. Uh, you can just create a, a web page. It doesn't have to be linked anywhere on your site. And you could just do the short code for form equals and you can just toggle between editing the form and, and seeing what it looks like on your site. And when you're done, you could just delete that test page. Right. Perfect. I don't, I don't, I don't see any harm in doing that. All right, Rick. Thanks so much for that. Super welcome. All right, guys, let's dive into today's tip of the week. And as I mentioned before, it does revolve around uh, member upgrades and the new up, uh, the new updates to the member upgrade pages. Uh, we want to talk about five simple ways that you can motivate, encourage, incentivize, and increase uh, member upgrades on your website. And David and I put this presentation uh, together here, and I think everything in here is actionable, and you can go ahead and use these tips on your site today uh, to get more members to upgrade for your higher-tiered uh, membership level. So let's dive uh, right into it here. And I think the first thing to understand are what the benefits of membership upgrades are, not only for you, but also for your members. And it's not only to generate more revenue on your website. Obviously, that's number one here on the list is more revenue for the website owner by um, offering upgraded plans. But we have to also keep in mind that having cheaper plans or free plans on your site, it does allow people to try your service or website before they buy. And sometimes establishing that trust and credibility is critical depending on the type of industry that you're in, how saturated it is, it is um, and also what, other, what your competitors are doing if they're offering uh, different tiered plans or free options. Uh, so definitely having the lower tiered plans uh, allows people to um, use your software and for you to get your foot in the door with warming up to them as a potential paying customer. Uh, and along with that, upgrades provide more value, obviously, for your paying members. You can provide them with more features, more visibility, um, access to premium content, and, and so forth. And then with that, your higher tiered membership levels also become assets that you can use in your marketing materials, um, in Facebook posts. It allows you to create promotions around the upgraded membership level. So it really gives you something to talk about um, as a company and gives you ways to have promotions, not only for new signups of your site, but how to, you can do promotions for existing members of your site and give them opportunities to engage more with the services that you offer. 
Uh, and then also ties into number five here, which is upgrades allow you to advertise your best features because when you're going to be advertising an upgrade, you're going to also list all the features that are unlocked with that membership level and available to the upgraded members. So it gives you a reason to showcase and highlight those very specific features, which might get lost among all the features that are available under the free membership plans or cheaper membership levels that you offer. So it is a lot more than just generating revenue for your site. Upgrades do, it's basically a comparison tool and creating a marketing asset and ways and a reason for you to promote more products on your site, which are the upgrade options. And Dave, you kind of put this list more, more, more so um, than I did. These are things that you should include when you're trying to explain the benefits of upgrading, right? Yeah, exactly. When you're trying to increase your revenue or retain your members or give them something to look forward to, to be excited about, you want to be as clear as you can about the additional benefits that there are when they go ahead and upgrade their either free or lower level membership plan to one of your premium membership plan. So, you know, you could advertise that they'll get more visibility like we talked about earlier in this webinar, you know, how they can be listed first in search results, how their content will show up first in search results. You know, maybe you want to feature them on your homepage. Those are some visibility aspects that you can promote to your members in terms of uh, only being available to your premium levels. And then that goes in with unlocking more features. You know, you can give your premium members access to publish more posts, uh, to publish certain kinds of posts, gain access to certain areas of your website that maybe contain only premium private content. We ha I know we have, we've had a few people on, on these webinars in the past who have these kind of private educational kind of websites. And for their premium members, they're the only members on their sites who get access to specific pages um, in the website that, that give them special access to, to some of that premium content that's not available to the free members. Also, one of the, the biggest potential uh, benefits to upgrading for members is you can give them either cheaper or free leads. Um, lead management, lead generation, uh, that's one of the biggest features that Brilliant Directories provides. And a lot of times it, it makes a lot of sense, at least when you're first starting out with your website, to provide free memberships to uh, businesses on your website. But with those free memberships, you can charge them per lead. And then once they get a taste for your website, once they see what it is you have to offer, you can then entice them to upgrade their membership level, maybe pay $5 a month or whatever makes sense for the industry, and then in return, provide them with free or cheaper leads. And, and David, not only the cost of leads, but um, we do have that pay per post add-on, and you can basically charge your members if they want to post a property listing or event or coupon. And based on the membership level, you can adjust that price. Uh, so yeah, basically it could be cheaper or free for your premium members to post certain types of content as well. So um, they can actually gain some cost savings uh, by upgrading. Yeah, exactly. And and because of those kind of fine-tuned settings that we offer for certain features, that makes it easier to promote uh, maybe two different premium plans uh, to offer instead of just one overall premium plan. Ultimately, you'll want to do whatever makes the most sense for the industry that you're targeting, but there's there's a lot of different benefits to provide to your premium members that you might want to hold back from your free or, or cheaper level members. The last thing is just that you can provide additional services um, kind of outside of the direct scope of your website to your more premium members. Again, depending on your industry, maybe you'll want to provide them with um, some SEO tips, some advice on how to increase their exposure online overall rather than uh, just solely focused on your directory and their listing on it. So what I was going to touch on is number six here, and I've been seeing it more and more. Um, our companies are providing more services outside of the online directory, uh, such as SEO services or having a premium membership gets you in a print directory uh, that the association or organization offers. Um, so it's not just what you offer on your directory. It could be some off-site benefits as well. All right, and here's a list, and this is these are the actionable steps we were talking about, and we're actually going to show you how to do um, each one of these on your website. 
And these are essentially five ways to dr basically draw more attention to the opportunity for a member to upgrade. Uh, and I'll just I'll go through these one by one, one by one, and then we'll actually do live examples of them. One of them is mentioning the upgrade opportunity on the members dashboard page. And with a recent um, membership feature we launched uh, last webinar, it's very easy to add custom content to the members dashboard. Uh, the second one is to explain when someone does click that they want to upgrade, you do have the opportunity to put title text there, uh, which is where you can explain to them why they should upgrade away from the membership level they're currently on and to one of the, the membership levels listed below. Uh, maybe give them an opportunity to reach out to you or call you. Um, but then number three, you also want to mention the benefits of each plan option that someone has to upgrade to, and we're going to show you how to do that. Another one, number four, is you can also add a limited time coupon code or promo code that the member can apply during their upgrade. So you can let them know that it's going to expire by a certain date or that it's going to give them their first month free. It just depends how you want to set up the, the logic of that promo code, but it's a great way to incentivize people to upgrade by giving them a little bit of help on their first payment. You should also, and I, I do recommend this a lot, is encourage members to contact you with questions. You can leave your phone number. You can link to your contact us page. You can link them to potentially maybe an FAQ page with frequently asked questions about the plan they're upgrading to, but encouraging them to contact you. Maybe they have questions. They're shy. They don't know what the next steps are. or They don't know exactly what's included with the upgrade. So allowing them to reach out to you kind of one, shows credibility that you're not afraid to talk to your members. And number two, if you do talk to them, it gives you an opportunity to establish a good rapport and a relationship with that person. And then number six here is don't forget to include upgrade offers in the email template. So we were talking with Eric about emails that are sent uh, to people who fill out the contact us form or, you know, there's emails that are sent when people sign up to your site, those welcome emails they receive. And we've touched on those in previous webinars. Those are great places to offer upgrade opportunities. And you can also go ahead and include promo codes in there as well that are unique to that membership level and so on. So let's dive in and let's actually look, uh, start with number one and see how we can add content and mention upgrading in the members dashboard. So these are the steps you guys want to pay attention to now and you can follow along with them and apply them to your site as well. Uh, so in this example, let's actually log in as a basic member. So I'll go to my members here. And we have a sample basic member here. Okay, great. Um, I'm on the dashboard here. And I see a lot of things that are telling me the status of my profile. And if it's really, really important for you guys to have members have complete profiles, um, these notifications are awesome, uh, but you can remove them also. And maybe we can remove one of these, David, just so the dashboard is not, not so busy and not, there aren't so many distractions. How's that? Yeah, I think that's probably a good move. All right. So we can go to finance and manage products, um, to edit the basic level, but there's also a quick link here when you're looking at your members. So I'll just click on basic. And it's taking me to the place where I can edit the basic membership level. Now, what I want to do is let's actually remove both of these, David, because the person's already got their contact details in there and I'm not too concerned. So under the additional settings tab, when I'm editing the basic membership level, there is a member dashboard option and there's a lot of yes, no things here. You can basically hide or show uh, certain different things in the dashboard. Uh, so I'm going to hide the progress bar. I don't need that. And also going to hide the profile steps. Those are those rectangular boxes at the top. And I'll go ahead and save the changes. Okay, and let's refresh the page. All right, so now we have slightly cleaner, less distractive dashboard area here. Um, okay, so now what we can do is there is an option to add custom content here at the top. And that's still going to be in the additional settings area, David. Under member dashboard, there is a drop down here. It's dashboard custom HTML. And what that allows me to do is select a custom widget that I've created on my site, and it will render the text or the images or whatever I have there on the dashboard. So this is a step we're all going to need to do if we want content on the dashboard. Let's do it together. It's not too complicated. We're going to go to toolbox, and we're going to create a new widget. 
The new widget is basically just uh, some text that we're going to add and, and then tell the system to add the text there. So we're going to click new widget and we're going to call it basic member dashboard. And I'm going to say something like, don't forget to upgrade your membership level for more uh, visibility. All right, so this is just very short text, right, David? We could obviously add paragraphs and images and, and whatever else we wanted here, but I'm just going to just put a short sentence there, and I'm going to save the changes. Great, and let's come back to the basic membership level. I'll, I'll backtrack a little. I know I'm going a little quick, but that's okay. So let's edit the basic level. Now that we've created that custom widget, it'll be an option to show uh, in the header of the dashboard. So additional settings, and then dashboard header custom HTML, and here it is, David, basic member dashboard. And let's save the changes. Now I just put one sentence there. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, great. So this isn't too impressive, David, but just as an example here, you could have a lar larger body of text here. Um, you can link to uh, the upgrade page. You can add images. Just like you set up your own web page, you can add supportive text here in the dashboard. Yeah, the best thing to probably do is um, maybe you'd want to have like a, a quick little square upgrade image or to keep it real simple, you can just add a, a simple background in there through uh, through the CSS or, or HTML code. That's right. So you can dress it. There's lots of ways to dress it up. I don't want to get too into it. Um, but here in the dashboard is a great place to bring awareness to the option uh, to upgrade the listing. So that takes care of number one. Number two is to add text to explain why they should upgrade on the upgrade page. So let's click on the upgrade listing page. And we've actually already done that here, David, the have questions about upgrading. Let me remove that temporarily just so everyone can see what it looks like without that. Let's go back to edit our basic membership level. So this is what's really cool. You guys want to make note of this. Now we're going to go to the pricing tab. If you scroll down, you do have an option here, upgrade page header content. And basically, you can put content here. I'll go ahead and remove this, and I'll save the changes. Again, more supportive content once the member lands on the upgrade page. So now we see that it's gone, and I just have the two membership levels that I have to upgrade to. Uh, which is fine. But what we want to do is at the top of this page is put supportive text that they're ready to make a change in their lives for the better of their business by choosing an upgraded membership level and just make them feel warm and fuzzy that they've landed on this page. It's also a place where you can put a contact us uh, link or your phone number, which is what we did in this example. So I'll go ahead and just to show you guys as an example, uh, put that text that I had back here. It's basically have questions about upgrading call us and I'll go ahead and save these changes again so now we have a banner at the top that says have questions about upgrading please call us again use your imagination put whatever supportive text was going to make them feel warm and fuzzy and feel good about their potential step to upgrade their listing one quick tip I will say about this supportive message in the in the top of this upgrade page is to try to keep it short and condensed and try not to lead people um, away from this page or try not to have them take other actions rather than upgrading. They're already on this page. You want to you want to push them towards completing their upgrade. So whether that's giving you a call, emailing you or just completing it themselves, you might not want to uh, encourage them to go to a, a separate page on uh, on your website. I think that's a really good tip is keeping them focused and locked in about upgrading. I think the phone number is the best uh, the best option here. Um, yeah, definitely. And it lets people know that there's a face behind uh, your website and that they're not just kind of throwing their money into a big black hole, that there are people behind the scenes ready to help. Exactly. Um, all right, so there's two things, the member dashboard and the, the header of the member dashboard, the, the header of the upgrade page, 
And the third place is where we have this code here is for each membership plan, you can have supportive text. So in this example, we can see that the featured plan doesn't have any supportive text, uh, which talks about the benefits of this plan. But the premium level does have supportive text and a promo code that can be used specifically on the premium plan. So David, let me show you exactly how I got this block of text um, underneath the premium option here. Okay, so we're back in the admin. We, this is where we put the upgrade page header content for the basic plan. In the box to the right is where you can put a description of why members should upgrade to this level. That's the block of text that'll show underneath the membership level if it's an option to upgrade to. And obviously there's one for the premium plan. So we need to toggle over to the premium plan to see exactly how and where we entered this, this code here, okay? So let's go back and let's end, uh, let's edit the premium membership level. And we're going to go to the pricing tab. And we're going to scroll to the bottom. So here's that text that, uh, that I added, David. It says use promo code and then save 30. There's obviously some styling here. Um, and then this options here. Let me remove this stuff and save the product details. So now there will be nothing underneath the premium option. How can someone upgrade, David, if they don't know what the benefits are? Yeah, it's really difficult. They're kind of guessing. They're not, they won't be sure whether or not it's worth their money. Without having those, uh, those additional benefits listed on this page, it, the page actually feels colder, less inviting. It kind of doesn't make you really want to move forward with, with upgrading almost. That's right. You don't need to list everything. Maybe list two, three, four, maybe five benefits of upgrading. It should be easily digestible. Like you, you glance at it and it makes you want to upgrade. It shouldn't be everything, you know, 30, 30 reasons to upgrade. You can certainly do so, but it should be the most powerful and most captivating reasons and beneficial reasons to upgrade is what you should list here. Um, so let's add that back. Actually, let's do something different, David. I, I did have a, a, a kind of like a quick tip or a workaround. Um, you guys have noticed here that, that I have some, some text with some code here. Let's say you're not familiar with all this. Um, here's a little trick that I found. If you go to your edit web page and click on new page to create a new web page, we're not going to save a new web page. But what you can do is this, which was what I like about this, this editor, is let me copy the text here that we had. So use promo code. So let's just copy this, use promo code. And I could type that in here, David. And if I can make it bold, I can even make the, the font size larger, like 18. And we're going to use save 30 as the promo code. And what I can do is I can make this a different color. We'll make it like burgundy. And we'll do space, and I'll put the color back to black. I'll make this bold. Make the whole thing bold. Okay. So this is obviously stylized, right, David? And let's say I want to make this save 30 even bigger, like that. What you can do is click on the code view here, David, and just... Even if you don't know what it says, just go ahead and copy it and go ahead and paste it in here. And I'll save the changes. We should probably make these just with the editor, actually. That's what's going to happen, guys. We're going to make these editors. Makes more sense. So we can save you a trip to the code editor. But now we can see it says use promo code 30, save, uh, save 30 to get 30% off this listing. Um, I love that. And the featured listing has nothing, right? All right, great. So we mentioned the benefits of upgrading. You know, let's let's talk about actually setting a promo code specifically for a, a, a certain membership level. So let's say we actually want the save 30 to only work on the premium level. So what we want to do is, is, is create a promo code. 
And we have the coupon codes add-on uh, for this site. So under the Finance tab, we can go to Coupon Codes. And I'm going to create a new coupon code. And we're going to say Save 30. It's going to be a percent discount of 30%. If you guys aren't using coupon codes on your site, I do recommend it if it's good for your industry. Uh, but what's nice about this is you can actually decide which uh, which membership levels it will work on. So in this case, I'm just going to select premium, which means if someone tries to use a coupon code on any other product or membership level, it's not going to work. Uh, while we're here, I'll just talk about a few other features. You can set a number, a maximum number of uses, so maybe first 10 people who use it. You can also set a start date and an expiration date, so it'll automatically expire after a certain date passes. Uh, we're not going to use those right now, but I'll go ahead and save the changes. And let's refresh this page. And let's try to use it on the featured plan if we try to upgrade here. So if we hit Save 30, it's going to say Invalid Code every time. So let's go back. And let's choose the premium plan. And we'll use save 30. And the code is valid. So it's dropping the $199 price down to $139.99. So I am using this code specifically for this product. Yeah, that's an excellent way to really try to push your members to upgrade to one specific membership level if, if there's a specific one that, that you're really targeting and you want to push people towards. I have a super pro tip for everyone. Only have one membership, one upgrade option on the page. Uh, less decisions uh, people need to make, uh, the more likely they are to actually move forward with a decision. Uh, so potentially, maybe you just want to allow them to upgrade from one plan to another, not multiple plans. The main benefit is it's going to simplify the page. And Dave, let's actually remove the featured option here and see how the presentation of the page looks. Yeah, when we do that, it'll really simplify the whole page, make the whole process a lot more streamlined. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the basic membership level. And if you guys don't know, you have the ability to control what upgrade options each membership level sees in their dashboard. So in this case, we're going to toggle back on over to the pricing tab. And here's all my membership levels. And you can see premium and featured are selected. I'll go ahead and remove the featured one, David, here and save my changes. So now there's only one upgrade option for the basic membership level. Okay, that was quick. Okay, great. So the page is more simple. Um, you can list the benefits for the premium plan, you know, make it, you know, widely more beneficial than the basic plan that you're on. Give them a promo code. In this case, we've put the, a contact phone number if they have questions. Uh, but now I can go ahead and continue with my upgrade. And this really simplified the process for a member to make an upgrade decision or buying decision using this format and this type of model. Yeah, it completely cuts out an entire thought process that they would need to go through if there were more than one possible upgrade options. That's right. And, and if you have a higher plan than a premium level, as an example, then once they upgrade to premium, then only make that next level tier um, potentially uh, available um, just, just for the sake of simplifying the upgrade process for your members. Uh, maybe they want to skip a step and upgrade to the highest plan you offer. Um, obviously you could have multiple membership plan options here, but that's what the phone number is here for is maybe they'll call you and ask you how to, how to get to the next tier. Also, you can do a little gamification. You can say that you can only get to the, the highest, highest plan by being a premium member for six months. Guess what? You're locking people in to be a premium member for six months now before they even have the option to get to your highest level plan. So um, there's lots of lots of things you can do um, to encourage members to upgrade. And actually, that's a great one is that uh, that they have to be a premium member. They have to be a higher tiered member for a certain amount of time before they can go to the highest, highest tier that you offer. All right, and lastly, um, as we were mentioning, is including the upgrade offers in your email templates. Um, we talked about editing email templates in the, the previous webinars, but uh, basically, let me show you. I won't go into too much detail on this one. You can go to uh, your email templates, uh, and there is an email template for upgrading. 
Uh, there's a few of them here. Membership level successfully upgraded, or you can do it on the welcome email. Um, it's probably better on the welcome email or any other email you send for an interaction. You can go ahead and customize that email template and include um, upgrade options in there as well. Yeah, one final quick note on that is in addition to adding those upgrade options to the standard email templates, if uh, your community is ripping and roaring and you're sending out constant newsletters, if, say, for example, you have a directory of CPAs or tax advisors and it's coming up on tax season and you're sending out a newsletter, you know, right when tax season is about to start, that may be a, a perfect email to include an upgrade option in. Yes, you can use seasonal uh, holidays and, and occurrences, New Year's, tax season. Um, if it's a national holiday, uh, you can use, those are all opportunities to offer uh, sales and promotions, Black Friday, Cyber Week, whatever it might, may be. People are expecting it, actually. Um, and, if, and if you want to be in line with uh, what some of the bigger companies are doing, then there's no harm or no shame in offering uh, seasonal promotions as well. All right, great, Dave. Thanks for, so much for helping us put this list together. What we wanted to do now is actually ask you guys if you'd like us to potentially um, optimize your upgrade pages and see if we can add supportive text uh, with some of the strategies that we just shared with you here. Let's see if we can get one or two uh, examples here. All right, Lori has her hand up. Uh, Lori, how are you today? I'm just fine. And how did you like the webinar so far today? Uh, very good. Absolutely. Okay, kind great. of where I'm at as far as getting ready to work on sending out a newsletter um, and then starting to explain to people how beneficial upgrading would be. Um, my population are very, the few people I have are actually new farmers just starting and I'm noticing that I'm having to even explain what a dashboard is and how to use it. So I think in a newsletter, because they've all signed up, and I think I have 80 plus signed up for a newsletter. Um, I'm going to show some pictures and examples of using the dashboard. And I did notice that my templates don't look updated like the examples you just showed. Let's um, let's take a look at your site and see what that could be. Why? Why that could okay. be. What's your site name? It's meetyourmarkets.com. Okay. Actually, real quick, Lori, while Jason's pulling that up, to get your members familiarized with their uh, account dashboards, yeah. what some of our, uh, what some website owners have done is in their um, their welcome emails, they've added a link to uh, a YouTube video or a, a kind of like a private page on the website uh, with a YouTube video embedded that kind of is just a screen share of you going over the uh, member account dashboard and kind of getting them familiarized with it that way. That's exactly what I need to do because that is really to even explain with my Facebook page that I have and running some Facebook ads recently. Again, the idea of what is a what is a dashboard? It's a business dashboard and how do I use it? And I know that and I work in a hospital and I also teach informatics and computers. And so I know that there's a high tech level and a low tech level. And I'm noticing, you know, it seems like the QR codes kind of pass a use an app. But my population seems to be more with excited about a QR code than managing an app and have the ability to keep their app updated and working properly. So um, that is kind of where I'm talking about my population. I think the YouTube clip would be perfect for me to add into my newsletter that's going to go out um, for the springtime because mine's seasonal with farmers. The whole fall we were kind of dead. So I kind of just dragged my feet knowing that right now the spring is getting ready to kick up. And then this is where they're going to start looking at growing their their um, customers. Awesome. Well, I just logged in as one of the, the free members, and I do see that they have an upgrade account option here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I would recommend a few tips here. So you're saying that they, they do like this QR code here because it is an option to review the remove it. They like it. Perfect. It seems to be because they're going to put stickers on their products. Love it. And they help people learn how. And it's really about learning how they grow their food, who they are. Are they really local? Um, do they use pesticides? Do they not? And that's pretty much the whole 
go with my site and also um, get loyal customers so that people repeat and, and look for their products in the grocery store versus um, I think relationships with who your growers are or what's going to keep the long term customers. They seem to have to start all over every year. OK, um, so, uh, do whatever you want. I mean, I'm okay. open for suggestions. <laughs> all right. So just just for the sake of keeping the dashboard very simple and, and straight straight to the point, I would recommend removing the progress bars because this manage account here kind of lets them know it's, it's just kind of repetitive here. Um, they so, don't even understand it. So, yes, so, I mean, really. Exactly. So let's let's remove that stuff. I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead and. Um, edit the, I guess you call it the free producer listing. Okay. Uh, go kind of, so remove the progress bar, remove the steps. I would even recommend removing this attract more clients to your website. I don't think at this stage it's important um, for, for, the, for your site at this point. What, what's more important is getting them to use the features that you have on this site. Um, you don't think that makes them feel a member of something that's not just a Facebook or a, a business site, though? It's good, but purely for the sake of simplicity, mm -hmm. I would I would recommend just potentially removing it or, again, making that an, an option for the premium members where you offer this as they get this badge that they could put on their website. Um, okay. Certified pro member of Meet Your Markets, you know, turn it okay. into a thing. But if people are just, if this is their first interaction with your site, is this free membership level? I would mm -hmm. try to simplify it and remove as much as possible. That's that's that may not be necessary right off the bat. Perfect. Um, let's make it simple. Okay. Uh, so that's the show member badge and dashboard. I'm going to say no. Okay. But what is helpful, and I notice that you're allowing them to publish various types of content. And it's nice that it's in the sidebar, um, mm -hmm. but there is an option here to show ad content in dashboard. And that's actually something we do want to show them um, because it tells them that they can start adding content to your site. So let me see. And they're starting to ask questions about how do I, what if I want to do a blog or what if right. I want to add a content. And that's really what we're trying to encourage them to do. Um, good, good, good. Um, I think it'll add some some good value here. Um, so we, we simplified the dashboard. Ad content is great because it kind of instructs them on actions they can take. Um, okay. And now they have their sidebar and their main dashboard. And now this is more, it makes more sense. It's like their control panel here. Uh, it says the date they joined um, and so on. But let's add. Um, yeah, that looks much better. Yeah. So let's let's add a message at the top here to upgrade their account. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to I want to do it uh, with that shortcut that I that I did here. So we're going to need to create a widget. All right, and I'm going to create a new widget, and this is going to be free member upgrade um, dashboard. Just we're just giving it a random name here, okay. and <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that trick I used to kind of style it out with the the editor here, and then I'll paste that into the widget here. So, um, so what do they get with an upgraded plan in a nutshell? Okay, so to upgrade for, I only have a premium or a free, and then my other category is for customers and supporters of the farmers, where they hopefully will get coupons that go to them is how I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know really, but the premium ones, they get more coupons to post. They have an, a more uh, articles they can post and more blogs they can post. That's basically it. So they're, they're, they could just post more coupons and articles. Um, yeah. Are they gonna show ahead of other members in the search results? Yes, they yes okay. they do. Um, That's kind of how you set it up, and I I mean that definitely makes sense. They have to they rank higher, mm -hmm. and um, I think with any kind of streaming coupon, I know that with most of their products, within three days it's no longer fresh and it's gone. So I I do want to have a limit as to any coupons it runs for four days, and. Um, 
you know, any any recommendations you have, really, I'm open to it. Okay. Um, Game or, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going Game to. Game or profile views, yeah, because they really don't know how to get a customer base is what I'm finding with most of the low farmers. So, they have so, no idea. Right. So now I'm with you and thank you for sharing that. So to get the link, I want to link to the upgrade page. So it's account forward slash upgrade. And so what I w was doing here is I was going to create a link for upgrade my listing. Okay. And I'm just using the editor because it's really easy. <laughs> okay. So now I kind of created this with the editor. And what I want to do is, and I know it's an extra step, but it's I'm going to go to the code view and I'm just going to copy all this gibberish here. And remember, I was creating that custom widget. I'm going to pop this in the widget. I'm just going to go ahead and save my changes. So now I have a custom widget, and I can choose to render this, this widget with that message at the top of the member's dashboard. Okay. So, so let's go back to the dashboard here. And we see there's no message up here right now. But let me go ahead and edit the uh, that membership level again. And I think it was the... Uh, free producer listing. Right. So I'm going to click edit. <clears throat> and what I want to do is under additional settings. And after you do this once or twice, you kind of know exactly where to go. I'm going to dashboard header custom HTML, and I'm going to put the free member dashboard upgrade stuff there. I'm going to go ahead and save the changes. And we'll refresh the page. So now there's now there's a message here. Again, we're just using basic text and a link and so on. Um, mm -hmm. If you know how to, you can style it more with images and making buttons and all that stuff. But now on the dashboard, it does say want more visibility, upgrade uh, my okay. listing. I'm going to I'm going to do a little bit of styling for you here real quick. Yeah, please do. OK. Go ahead and edit this widget. Just because I know how to do this, but again, it's not necessary to do this. It's just if you can and want to, you you, you could. That will be after I get every thing going. Right. All right. I think that should do it. And let me just do this one too. Okay. My new farmers are nurses that I work with that have that are trying to grow their farm to retire and do that instead of nursing got it um so here now it's a little more stylized let me just do it one more nice. th one more thing for you here oops thank you so much yeah no problem just want to use it as an example here Okay, great. And yeah. we can oh, yeah. refresh the page just a second. See those changes. Okay. It didn't take one of my changes. That's okay. Okay, that's enough there. So what we've done now, which was my goal, is here in the in the dashboard. Uh, you now have more, you're, you're bringing more awareness, want more visibility again, and you just list a few benefits here and this yeah. will link to the upgrade my listing page. Okay. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do one example on your site here. So now you do have a call to action at the top of here and mm -hmm. it is going to attract more attention to when they log into their dashboard to upgrade their listing. Okay. Good. All, right. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your site with us here. Well, thank you very much. Awesome. You're very welcome. Looking great. All right. Great uh, update here now on her dashboard for her free producer listing. She's drawing more attention to the upgrade option. You can obviously put more warm and fluffy text there. Uh, looks like we're going to wrap it up there. It was a great webinar Wednesday. 
Um, glad we could help with the upgrade pages. We're looking to see your progress. Share your sites on Facebook. Share screenshots of what you've done on your upgrade pages. And again, um, if you'd like to continue the conversation and talk about your site or get feedback from fellow directory owners, please feel free to go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook, and uh, we'll be happy to continue the conversation there. So on behalf of myself, Rick, and David, thank you so much for joining us for Webinar Wednesday. Have an awesome day and make it a productive week. Take care, guys.